Section 3 starts to explore the Charles Barg and Leon Jerome drawing course. The drawing course is a series of almost 200 lithographic plates created by Charles Barg, a 19th century artist, teacher and lithographer, under the guidance and partnership of his teacher Jean-Leon Jerome. This course and many others like it were created for students wishing to gain entry to one of the many academies in France in the 19th century. There were many different drawing courses and manuals during the 19th century, but the Barg course has stood the test of time, mainly due to its logical, simple and naturalistic approach to teaching drawing, whereas many others often contained overly complicated hatching and stylized drawings. These two pictures represent the first place of both the Julien and the Barg drawing course. You can see the vastly different approaches taken by both. Julien's plates rely on subtle curves and fine rendering, whilst Barg plates are much clearer and more simplistic in the forms. Barg's approach to explaining the forms of shapes would resonate much clearer to the beginner than to Julien's, where the student would have to already have an advanced knowledge of material handling and forms. Julien is already introducing the student to the idea of value and subtle edges, whereas Barg is showing the student to look for the big linear forms before worrying about value, or in other words, prioritise proportion before value. As both courses progress, the complexity and difficulty of the plates increase, and whilst the Barg plates always have a clear and simple linear construction at the core, as can be seen by the initial block in here, Julien blocking contains many soft curves and fine details like in the hair. These small details will easily overwhelm the new student, whereas Barg is telling the student to simplify these complex forms like the hair into a few manageable shapes. Julien is also making no attempt to find a linear blocking for the shadows and is leaving this to the student. The shadow shapes of Julien are also full of soft subtle rendering which can be seen on the nose. Contrasting this to Barg, who is using bold and simple shadow shapes throughout the whole drawing, with only small reflected light under the chin being any deviation from the simplified shadows. Even the approach to rendering the forms are different, with Julien using hatching to carefully build up tone, possibly using many layers of chalk, but Barg would have used a softer willow charcoal to mass in large areas all at once, again simplifying this problem. The juxtaposition between each course is apparent in these plates, with Julien's focus being on a complete linear construction before careful hatching, whereas Barg's emphasis is on the student finding the big forms in a simple linear construction to understand the big design, with the bulk of the drawing development coming in value. Barg puts a strong importance in simplifying the darks of the subject, where Julien doesn't seem to differentiate between the two. By using the blocking from this Barg plate as a guide, we can create a different version of Julien's initial linear blocking that shows a more simple, abstracted approach, but one that the beginner will more readily understand. The bar course has been the learning tool of both Picasso and Vincent van Gogh, with van Gogh saying, careful study and the constant and repeated copying of Barg's exercises has given me an insight into figure drawing. I have learned to measure and to see and to look for the broad outlines so that, thank God, what seemed utterly impossible to me before is gradually becoming possible now. The course is in essence a progression of plates, starting with very simple linear drawings, which gradually become more complex as the course progresses. There were no written instructions, or at least ones that survive on how to teach the course, but all the early plates, which are the ones we'll be focusing on, show the student how to abstract and simplify complex organic forms into simple linear drawings. 
This is done by showing the initial stage of a drawing alongside the finished version to help guide the student in their early studies. With the later plates and more complex plates being free of any of these initial drawings, as the student is to expected to make their own decisions on simplifying and abstracting the forms. It's important to remember the aim of these plates isn't simply to copy mindlessly what you are seeing, but to learn to understand the drawing decisions that have been made and how Barg has simplified and abstracted such complex forms. Most of the plates are taken from classical sculptures and antiquity, which at the time was considered to be the pillar and the highest achievement in the arts, and was a way of training the students to understand what was considered good form and taste. This idea of imposing taste on a student is of course arcane and limiting, but the course really is second to none in how complex forms can be simplified and understood, which is why it's still such a valuable source of knowledge and information to this day and will be for many more. You'll see the plates are a departure from the abstract nature of sections one and two, as you'll now be drawing recognisable features. It is still fundamental though, that you see these as abstract shapes at the beginning, in order to be successful in the final drawing. Falling back on the concept of gridding to abstract down forms onto the two dimensional planes using horizontals and verticals, using positive shapes, negative spaces, to successfully plot accurate shapes. And of course, triangulation to visually connect the whole drawing together and to ensure accurate proportion throughout. In this section, you'll be introduced to the concept of overlapping shapes and how line is really used as a shorthand to help you understand how forms overlap each other you will notice that these plates contain not only information of the silhouette as seen in sections one and two, but also information of the interior form and shadows. It is important to remember when drawing, lines should be considered proportion, whether it is drawing the silhouette of the form or the shadow shapes of the interior. This is because line is the groundwork or blueprint for an actual drawing. And so it's really used as the preliminary tool. Because when we refer to a drawing, we are actually referring to a fully rendered tonal picture and not its linear construction. For sections three, four and five, it is recommended to use cartridge paper of around 120 GSM to 150 GSM with a slight tooth. It's not recommended to use printing paper, as this is too smooth for graphite and won't allow you to develop these drawings.